All right, class. Today uh, we're going to cover if statements, but uh, a little bit more than what we've been talking about before. <clears throat> At this point, we've talked about uh, if statements, switch statements, uh, how to use strings, and things like that. <clears throat> if, else, if, uh, switch case. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is nested ifs. So, first and foremost, nested ifs. Let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick project. And then, again, I usually just put the underscore name. Uh, whatever the date happens to be. And then you just put in the name of the project. And this is just going to be nested ifs. So if we are now, you've kind of got that idea down. <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, the difference between a regular if, nested if. And there we go. <clears throat> so a regular if is just basically one layer. A nested if would be an if inside another if. <clears throat> Whenever you're dealing with upper level programming, you almost always have different layers of the program. Uh, if you look here at this brace, notice how it's aligned, right? Public to there. If I click on this brace, the public static void main to here, this is actually nested inside of this. And when I put other code, that gets put inside of this. That's why these are all tapped over. Uh, <clears throat> makes it easier to read. Uh, makes it easier to understand you know where in the code you are when you're going down it so if I were just to let's just say make a variable here zero just a basic if statement if you know var one is equal to zero right that's a single if now let's say I have equals zero as well. Let's say I happen to have another if inside of this statement. So if var2 equals equals zero. So in order for this to happen, the first if has to happen. So if this first if fails, the second if never runs. So if I put a little print statement here, and then maybe a second statement here, and I run this, we should see inside the first if, inside the second if. Uh, and the reason we're seeing that is strictly because, hey, it is inside both the ifs, right? So, pull this up a little bit uh, so we can kind of see everything. There we go. Now, if I were to change the second item here to a 1, well, it's going to check, is var1 0? It is. It's going to go inside here and print this. Is var2 0? In this case, it's not. So I won't print that second one. Now, if I change the second one to back to 0, you know, they'll both run. If I change the first, however, to 1. So this first if is going to fail. So if it fails, it's not going to run any of the code inside of it. In fact, you'll see, hurrah, nothing runs. So, so the way an nested if works is, as long as the first one makes it through, it'll go in and run whatever code is in here. Uh, so in this case, this is useful if you have to, let's say, let's say I ask a, have a questionnaire. And the first question is, are you a male? Yes or no? Are you a female? You know, yes or no? Uh, and depending on the answer to that, you know, I might ask you different questions. Say, if we were, if we were talking medically or something. I may direct different questions to a guy as I, than I would to a female. Uh, so in that case, I'd want to break it up kind of like this. If, you know, you're male, I would run this code here. You know, if you're female, I'd run other code. And then I'd have different questions inside of each one of these. You know, if you answered yes to this question, you know, 
add point. If you ask it no to this question, add points. There's a lot of uh, tests or uh, things where they would go through, ask you a bunch of questions, and then they score you based on how you answer them. Uh, we could talk about psychological tests or just kind of IQ tests or something, anything. There's a whole kinds of tests that basically go in and give you a certain number of points based on what you answer. Uh, you know, every answer may be worth a certain number of points. Uh, it, it may not be a zero, you know, or points or nothing kind of thing. So in this case, uh, it just depends on what you're actually working for. Now, almost every single program in existence <coughs> will have nested ifs or compound ifs, or a mixture of both. Uh, and we'll talk about compound ifs later. Now, even with switch case, I can nest switch cases inside of switch cases, or I can even nest ifs inside of switch cases. So for example, if I were to say switch fair one, okay, I'm gonna do it right, there we go. Now we're just to say, you know, case zero break. I could put another switch case here for fair two, switch fair two, and just put that whole switch inside of this. Alt Shift F, it lines it up, you know, and then I could have another case inside of that case zero. Well, I guess it helps if I put that in a print statement. Oh, and it helps if this is a zero. Let's take a look here. Inside the first, inside the second, inside the first, inside the second. So I can nest switch cases. I can nest ifs. Uh, instead of a switch case, if I didn't want to do this, uh, doot, 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 I could easily just come in here and do an if statement instead. You know, if, well, why rewrite what's already up here? copy and paste, Alt-Shift-F lines everything up, and I'll get the exact same result. Uh, so you can mix and match ifs and switch cases. Obviously switch cases look a little more, you know, organized, I think. Uh, that's one of the nice benefits. They're also a little more efficient, but uh, ifs are still used probably more than anything. Uh, mostly because they're used in every single language. It's just something that people commonly use. Uh, but you can mix match and do it however you want, really. Uh, sometimes I'll have a switch and then inside I'll have an if else or something like that. Uh, it just depends on what it is I'm trying to do. So this is basic nested ifs. Now we can nest further if we wanted. We could have an if else if else and then nest things inside that if I want. Uh, so in this case, if fair one is zero, else if var1 is 1, and then I can have an else. Then inside this, I could put another if statement here, you know, uh, if var2 equals 0. Let's just say both are the same. And I'll just copy paste this here and put it here, but it will be one. And else, I'll just say, well, uh, this will run if zero is, well, any number other than zero and one. I'll just say, well, uh, var one is something other than zero or one just so we have a little bit of things. And I, again, usually mark these braces like this. As you can see, I have quite a lot of them. And I usually Alt-Shift-F a lot to line things up. Uh, and the reason these are lined up is because you can clearly see this if is inside that if. This if is inside that. Uh, it, it makes it easier to read when you're trying to read back what's actually running. So I run this, and both are the same. Uh, and I'm just going to put both the same 
zero, both at the same one. So I have a little bit of differentiation there. And if I come up here and change this to one, let's see what happens. Nothing. Uh, so why didn't the last thing do something? Well, variable one is zero, that is true. And I have an if, but nothing else, right? So this second if failed and nothing ran. Uh, so that's why I ended up getting nothing. Uh, the first one's one, the second one's zero. Well, actually it would go to this one. But var one, or var two in this case, is not the same, so it printed off they're not the same. Uh, so if I wanted to add on to these, I could throw an else in there. Else, which would mean the, the first one's zero, but the second one's not, not the same. Uh, not zero. And I could do the same thing here. And again, I would get into the habit of doing this little uh, comment at the end of each if. Uh, and you could be more specific, end if, you know, var2 equals zero. Because these braces are very, very easy to have an extra. And then all of a sudden you've got 15 lines that are red. And if you start clicking on these and they don't end what they're supposed to end, then you know you have an extra or not enough. Uh, something along the lines of that. Alt-Shift-F can also help you a little bit. If I get rid of that brace, for example, and I hit Alt-Shift-F, you see it lines everything else under here when it's not supposed to be. Uh, there we go. Fix that. So, uh, it's not zero. I will paste, copy-paste this right here. And this would be one, it's not one. So if I run that now, the second is not one, but the first was. So that's why it does that. Now I'm going to wait just a second and just walk through it one more time in case I was uh, doing a too much copy and paste for anybody. But basically, if fair one is zero, we'll go in here and we'll run this little if. And the if has two outcomes. If var2 is 0, we'll say they're the same. If there's any other number other than 0, it'll say it's just not 0. Simple, quick, and easy. Now, if var1 happens to be 1, we'll come in here and we will you know, check to see if the 2 is 1 as well. And then we'll say they're the same. If this second variable is any other number, 0, a million, it's going to print this message here. This prints if that first number is not zero or one. So if I come up here and just change this first number to 9001, then I'll end up getting fair one is something other than zero or one. So that's basic nested ifs in a, in a nutshell for the most part. Uh, we'll be seeing a couple more examples of those later, uh, along with compound ifs, which will be the next topic. Uh, and both of those kind of go hand in hand, because uh, they kind of do the same thing. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Now, if you have any questions or issues or problems, uh, just be sure to let me know. But this is your basic uh, compound if, or the idea behind it anyway. Uh, we have an if, and inside of that we have another if. So there's your first simple explanation right here. Uh, we can use switch cases, of course, with that as well. And I can put a switch case inside of a switch case. You can really put just about anything inside of anything else. I could put another if or s switch case inside of this one and just keep nesting inwards until infinity, well, or until I run out of memory. Uh, I could also do ifs. So it really doesn't matter what you do. This would be considered nested inside of that. And of course, we could put larger ifs, if, else if, else if, else, and then inside there I could put more ifs, else if, else if, else is inside each one of those if I wanted to. Maybe I give you one choice, and inside there I give you, you know, five sub-choices for that one choice. Let's say, for example, I said, all right, uh, do you want breakfast, lunch, or dinner? You said breakfast. Well, now I have five choices. Do you want, you know, pancakes if you chose breakfast? Do you want uh, waffles, cereal? Uh, if it's lunch, is it a sandwich, is it a salad, is it dinner, steak, chicken, you know, fish, whatever. 
Uh, so there might be a couple of choices within that first choice. Uh, so that's typically where you would kind of see that. Other places this would be used is if I have to have multiple things be true for something to happen. So uh, if we're talking about, let's say, a game, for example, uh, I need to be a certain level and I also have to have a key to the door. Uh, I may have had to talk to somebody in particular. Uh, if any of those things happen to be you know, true, I may have to have all of them be true. So if I talk to this person and if I have the key, you know, if this event flag is triggered, if I am this level, you know, I may have all these ifs nested in there to check one at a time to see if they're true. Uh, and if they are, boom, the door opens and you know you move on to the next part of the game. If we're talking a real world application, then it might be something uh, more along the lines of, have you checked all these boxes? If you check box number one, you know, okay, we move on to the next one. If you check the, the next box, the next box. Uh, if you said yes to this question, well, I need to check, you know, did you answer this box? Uh, something along the lines of that. <clears throat> Hopefully that clears up a little bit. Uh, like I said, we're going to see more of this because pretty much once you get to nested compound ifs, uh, you see them pretty much almost every single project after that. Because uh, it's not something that's going to be foreign, it's something you're going to keep continue seeing throughout the semester and well into later programming because it's just one of those basic things that is used all the time. Uh, so we'll stop here. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me, leave comments. Uh, if you have any issues or troubles, I'll scroll through one more time for anybody who uh, might have missed something. And if you happen to have a red line somewhere, uh, if you're using NetBeans especially, you know, that's why I leave these marks here underneath each one of these. Uh, if you're missing a brace or something, typically your error will look something like this, you know, unreachable statement. If you have too many braces, it, you might end up like this. Illegal start of expression, cannot find symbol, blah, blah, blah. Too many open braces. Uh, you might end up getting reach into files without parsing. Those are common errors whenever you have, you know, brace issues. And the reason I put all these comments in here after each brace is to basically keep count of those braces. Because uh, every time I have an open brace, I have to have a closed one. Open, there's got to be a closed to match. Open, there's got to be a closed to match there. And that's just one of the easiest places even fairly veteran programmers run into problems. Uh, you write code and then you know you go down the list. Uh, maybe you get too excited and just start copying and pasting stuff and all of a sudden you have 50 lines of code that are highlighted in red uh, if you're using an IDE like this. Or you compile and it gives you all these errors. Well, a lot of the time it turns out to be just one of these and that's one of the hardest things to honestly find. So I found in my many moons of practice that if you mark them, uh, I know it takes a you know second or so to do that for each one of those, but it just makes it so much easier uh, to find an error, especially if it involves a brace. I know I've mentioned this before, but every student I've had who, who still does this, uh, they've told me stories of going into upper level programming classes and people just don't do that. And they're some of the few that the, my students, the one that, do, that does this, uh, that don't have a lot of brace errors. And also, word of warning, if the end of your program looks like this, you done screwed up. Uh, I mentioned that again, because people's programs still tend to look like that, uh, particularly when you get more things to put in there and more braces. Uh, in NetBeans, Alt-Shift-F auto formats for you, lines everything up. You should be able to do that on your own without it. Basically, every time you have an open brace, you tab over five spaces. That's just good formatting, so I can clearly see what's inside of what. All right, I think that's about it. Uh, so again, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.